everybody. So here's the story of my life. I was born in France and especially in the Ardennes, which are really, really close to Belgium, in a little town of charleville mezières and more precisely in a teeny, teeny, tiny town called Lichet. That's where I grew up with my brother and my sister. I lived in Belgium, in Belgium. I was a scout. At some point, I decided to serve a mission for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Try to say that fast. And I landed in Louisiana, in the Baton Rouge, Louisiana mission, where I met this guy. After I came home, we started Daily. And after, you know, going back and forth and back and forth between France and Louisiana, he proposed to me. I got my visa, so I left and I got married. And then about two and a half years after that, this little guy came along. And so we were having fun all together. All those adventures led to this moment where you can now understand why I'm doing this. I have family both in France and in the U.S. And I have noticed that there's some uh, misunderstandings, some misconceptions about both France for the Americans and the US for the French. So I am here to straighten things out. So in case you don't know where France is on the map, you go to New York, you're in New York, you cross the sea towards the east. You keep swimming, just keep swimming, keep swimming, keep swimming, east, 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 and you will find Portugal. Thought I was gonna say France, nay, nay, Portugal. If you keep going east, when you're in Portugal, you're gonna find Spain. And once you're in Spain, go up north, and finally, you're gonna be in France. Left, north. Well, now that Everybody knows where France is. Let's talk about France, right? We are here to talk about France, so let's talk about France. France, first of all, is not that small. Although it is true, it is way smaller than the United States in his unity and his whole. It is, however, one of the biggest country of the European Union. To give you an idea, France is roughly the size of Texas. Most people who tell me they've been in France tell me they've been to Paris. Paris is the capital of France. It is pretty. It is a beautiful city. Don't get me wrong, I love Paris. I don't think Paris is the fairest representation of France and her whole. It's kind of like when foreigners say, Oh yeah, I know the US, duh, I've been to New York. But it's not because you've visited New York that you know the whole United States. That makes no sense for you to say you know the US if you haven't visited more. And I think it's the same in France. I mean, just in what I'm gonna call the metropolitan area, the like the land part, the part that's glued to Europe, there are three different seas or oceans. We have at least two big chains of mountains. We have sleeping volcanoes. We have big agricultural fields. At least a dozen big cities. Each one completely different from the other ones. And so on, and so on, and so on. There is so much more in France than Paris and La Riviera. And since we're touching geography, France is not just a metropolitan country. It is not just the big part that's glued to Europe, but it regroups many territories and islands. They're called the Département d'Outre-mer, and they're located a little bit all over the world. For example, Tahiti and all the French Polynesian islands, many other um, little islands and territories in the Caribbean, and a lot of other very, very gorgeous places. All these places speak, or most of them speak, French as a primary language. Les poissons, les poissons, moi j'adore les poissons. Parce que le français, c'est très joli. C'est très joli le français. Which brings me to the next big misconception is, yes, French is the official language, but there is almost as many ways to speak French than there is regions, or région, or département. 
Some regions use different words, some regions use different sentences, uh, expressions, like dem fada, that's, that's southern, very southern. You don't say dem fada dans le nord de la, in the north of France, no, it doesn't make sense. For example, the word for floor cloth, you know the cloth that you use to clean the floor with, depending on where you live, you call it a serpillère, or you call it a wasang, or you call it a lock, or you call it a bash, or you call it a panos, or a torchon, depending on where you live in France. Mine is serpillère, or wasang, occasionally, that's very slang to where I'm from. A lot of places are trying to bring those old expressions, those old languages back to life. <laughs> those almost forgotten regional languages are taught in some schools in those particular regions. I'm thinking uh, particularly in uh, Britain. I know they're trying really hard to bring back to life the Britain language, which is very Celtic and mystic, I love it. And of course, each region has a different accent. I would say the more like famous ones would be the Sti language and accent in the north of France, the Parisian accent, and because yes, people in Paris talk a little bit differently. And uh, people who speak French in the South also have a very different, distinctive uh, accent. Also, and in the case you're wondering, France is a democracy. However, unlike the US, we actually, the citizens, each citizens, vote for pretty much every single person who is elected from the mayor to the president of the country i mean you vote for the president of your country but it's counted very very differently than in france in france it's very simple each citizen go cast his vote and it's counted as is there is no uh, electoral college each citizen's voice is counted Let's see, uh, let's see, it's, it's a, let's go back a little bit, Sarkozy and, and Holland. Whoever voted for Sarkozy is adding his vote to Sarkozy. Whoever voted for Holland had his vote, add his votes to Holland. And at the end of the day, the one who gets the more votes gets to be elected. There is no in-between. It's direct voting. We also have a Senate and we have uh, the Assemblée Nationale, which is our equivalent to the US Congress. La séance est ouverte. Our way to do things are actually um, very similar when it comes to politics. Our presidents are, however, uh, elected for five years instead of four. We call that a quinquennat, you know, quinquennat, five quinquennat, five years. And they can be re-elected right away uh, if they want, so they can be president of France for 10 years, but they can't be elected more than two times in a row. I'm pretty sure they can rerun, like if, if they're presidents for two times in a row for two, um, two tours, and then uh, someone else is a president, I'm pretty sure they can rerun after that. It's just, I don't think there is any precedent of somebody actually doing that. Finally, France is an old, old country. My husband is American, as you now know, and he's very, very cute when he's like, you know, seeing those buildings in the States that are like two, maybe 300 years old. And he's like, oh, that's amazing. And I am not amazed at all. Uh, and I'm going to tell you why. I'm from a very little town, as you also now know. And in my little town, um, in the middle of nowhere, 130 people, you know, more cows than people, actually. We have a church from the 11th century. And we have a little castle from the 13th century. So when you, s <laughs> when my husband is like, wow, that's from 1856, and I'm like, 
yeah. So what? Like, it's normal. <laughs> It's not even that old. When I say France is, is old, it is old. The nearest big town to me is called Charleville, Mézières. It has a fantastic puppet festival. It was created by a count named Charles de Gonzague and it was erected between 1606 and 1627. So just the nearest big town to me is from the 15th century. Wait, is it 15th? But the earliest, earliest famous trace of civilization that we have found was actually discovered randomly by a dog or children depending on um, the story you get but there was those children who had a dog and in the 1940s they randomly found a cave with paintings that were dated all the way back to the 19,000s and 15... Between, between 19,000s and 15,000s before Christ. You cannot visit the actual caverns anymore. You used to be able to. But they have created, I think, four different replicas that you actually can visit. Uh, because uh, once the caves were open, the atmospheric atmospheric changes, the changes in the air and in the pressure, and also of having people, you know, breathing close to it, started damaging the paintings. I mean, they're really, really old paintings. So they created replicas and they closed the original cave to uh, study and to preserve. And you can visit, they're called the Grotte de Lascaux, the Lascaux Caves. I've heard it's pretty amazing. I've never actually visited them, but it's on my bucket list, definitely. There are more videos to come, but I hope I have answered to like your basic, basic questions about France. If you have questions, please leave them in the commentary section. If there is um, things you want to know, once again, do not hesitate. You can hit me on Instagram as well. And I hope to see you soon and have a very, very good day. A la prochaine.